you in the good times, the in-between times, and the challenging times. So how do you live a fasted lifestyle? Because it's so much more than you. What does he want you to live a fasted lifestyle? Because the world is waiting on you to step into your high heels. Of course you're a man, you don't wear high heels. But to step into your high places and conquer for the kingdom not for the island not for your nation but for the kingdom of God your life should make a difference in the kingdom it's bigger than you it's more than you so we get a lot of times we get caught up in our circumstance a lady called me this week, a woman of God. And she was tired of waiting. She wanted to choose according to her dictates because she was now 45 and if she don't get busy, life is going to pass her by. I said, honey, you were born to serve the Lord. You were not born for a husband. You were not born for children. You were born to serve the Lord. Period. That's why you, you open your eyes this morning was to fulfill the purposes of God. And destinies are waiting on you. People who are waiting saying, God, where's my help? You are the help. You are the help. A lady got on a plane from Atlanta I thought I didn't know her I 
had given her a card. I met her in a mall. Gave her a card. The last one was in Atlanta. She got on a plane yesterday to meet me and left today. Whose answer is in your belly? Who are you carrying an answer for? And then the Lord reminded me why I had her answer. The Lord reminded me for seven years I didn't watch no TV, didn't go to no movies. People call me super spiritual. I said, let me do what I got to do and you do what you got to do. I told somebody else, you go to your church and let me go to mine. I told somebody else, my Holy Ghost and your Holy Ghost apparently are two different people. given up lately besides food that's the normal thing to do what have you given up seven years I didn't watch no TV and people wonder why I walk and what I walk in and why is she an apostle don't you know three years ago my pastor wanted to ordain me and I told him no three years ago this is old news in 2000 I was in Israel with uh, um, Miles Monroe and back then, he saw the apostolic call on my life. 2000. You can't get tripped up in what God said about you. And believe your own press. Because it's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. That's why you get in, when you get in challenging moments... The Bible says, press! No word in, no word out. No prayer in, no prayer out. You can't wait till the storm comes to start to pray. You have to have stored up prayers. You have to have accumulated prayers. That's living a fasted lifestyle. In 1996, I was in Ghana met some men who were making too much noise in my hotel room and I didn't know there were two pastors so the next morning I couldn't wait so, matter of fact I did it that same night I knocked on their door and said you're making too much noise and they let me to know who they were I said but you're still making too much noise so they said well we want to take you out tomorrow we're so sorry we were childhood friends we live in London but we came back to Ghana and um, we want to take you out tomorrow and they took me to lunch. And there is one where my ghost writing career started as far as writing a book for somebody, but they write their name on it. After that conversation, they flew me to London. When I left to go to London, the church was 5,000 people. I was in London for three weeks. When I came back to Ghana, it raised to 7,000 people. So I asked the bishop, I said, how did this happen? He said, accumulated prayers are working. No prayers in, no results. You gotta, pro you gotta be offensive. Don't wait till you get hit. Hit the enemy, hit the enemy, hit the enemy. With your lifestyle. What are you about to give up for God? What are you about to give up for the purposes of God beyond food? It's bigger than food. There's something you know as I'm talking. There's something you know you can give up. For the purposes of God. For seven months, I did not sleep at night. You know, we are accustomed to sleeping at night. It's what we do. No sleep prayed from 12 at night to 6 in the morning you got to be radical you got to be radical 
when you go after God and you can do it it will not kill you global life church the world is waiting forget St. Thomas yes you live here but when you affect the world you affect St. Thomas don't you the name of the church is global life life you're a life giver the church is the body of Christ the kingdom it's time for each individual under the sound of my voice to say God if it's to be it's up to me if it's to be it's up to me I'm not looking at what she's doing I'm not minding her business I'm not wondering why she's not coming to church if it's to be it's up to me and God can start a revival with one person God can start a revolution with one person. Uno solamente. I have some scriptures here. Oh God. God saying faith is arising and change is not coming it's come change is here because seven the number seven is the number of perfection we've had sevens before we had oh sevens we had 97 but this you see all the stuff that's going on in the world nobody thought president-elect Trump was going to win CNN they kept saying it's going to change and they didn't know not because they were trying to be objective but they kept saying it was going to change when Florida comes in, they say. And God said, he's the man. Whether he brings confusion or not, and Lord have mercy if he don't stop tweeting. I wish somebody would throw that phone, but he's the man. And so let's just say, he brings a whole lot of confusion to the earth. Just, 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 just to say that, right? But your prayers and your prayers are powerful enough and bigger enough than any confusion the enemy can bring forth. Do we think that we're going to live on the earth forever? Do we really believe the word when it says about uh, what's going to happen in the end times? Those times are not tiptoed through the tulip kind of times. So that's why Brexit had to happen. And that's why Europe is in one kind of mess. You know, Sister Gwen, back in the day when you go to Europe, their money was so higher than ours. Now their money is humbled. I was in Europe, I was in London about uh, three months ago. And I was like, whoo, thank you, Jesus. Money is almost, you know, almost even. It was wonderful. And they were so proud with the pound. They didn't want to come with the euro when the euro had just come out in about 1993. They didn't want to join themselves with the euro, which was all over Europe. They were the pound. Now the pound has been humbled. That's the signs of the times we're in. It's not only America. God wants the church to pray so that there will be a vast, uh, not an exodus, but a vast advancement of the kingdom, vast soul winnings. Do you know there are people in the face of the earth who have not heard the gospel? And we're here at Ease in Zion, la-da-dee, la-da-da, concerned about us four and no more. And that people who haven't heard, it's time to get busy centering ourselves and saying, I will live a fasted lifestyle. Two more points and I'm done. How do you do that? You pray without ceasing. Remember the first thing I said, you, you take something from yourself and you fast that. For me, it was TV. I love movies. I love 
because I was a broadcast um, major. That was my, broad, my, my major. Information. So I took that from myself and I replaced that with the word and with prayer. So you know what you have to do. That's number one. Number two, praying without ceasing. You have to get to a place that if you're not verbally talking, you're praying in the spirits. And that doesn't happen overnight. It happens with spiritual exercise. If today you can only lift 10 pounds and you keep trying, by next month you should be able to lift 15 pounds. And so you continue to practice praying in the Spirit. Because if you do that, you're building yourself up on your most holy faith. And that's how you live a fasting lifestyle. And lastly, you don't become weary in well-doing. You say, I have been praying in the Spirit. I have been fasting TV. You know, I'm just going to take a break. I'll never forget this situation because I used to look up to this prayer warrior, Pastor Oriel, Oriel and uh, Oriel. Some kids call him Pastor Oriel. That's why that was funny. And my sister, they know this woman. I mean to tell you, pray the horns. I mean, just pray. Shake things up. And then she got weary. She wanted what she wanted. And the woman has never, ever been the same. This was like in the 90s. Never, ever been the same. And sometimes we think we can jump off and then we'll jump back home when we feel. In this season, God say no. I'm going on without you. My business requires haste. Ah! There's a song that says, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. And I got an even better one. I want to be in the forefront of what you're doing in the earth. So you got to pay a price. You got to pay a price. Hashatalamando. Got to pay a price. To be in the middle of what God's doing in the earth. In the earth. In the earth. Shandalabanso kobondeya bandeya. Dadaya bandolo bosha. You got to pay a price. Say, Lord, say, Lord, use me for your glory in this season. Lord, I'm willing, I'm able to do what you say. Lord, use me. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. So help me, God. A lot of times we tell him we're ready. But then you ask him to help you. Because there's adversaries. You need the help of God. And then he enforces your words. And then he dispatches angels on your behalf. Because after all, when you say, Lord, use me, that's heaven speaking through you. Heaven wants to use you more than you want to be used. Because heaven has invested much in your belly. And heaven wants what it wants. What investor would invest 100000 and walk away and never come back to see about the investment? And what God has invested in you is worth, worth much more than $100,000. It's priceless. The precious blood of Jesus. Ah! God, today. The precious blood. Don't let God's son's death be in vain. Get busy. Get busy doing the Father's business. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to sit down. And love not your life so much that you can't give it up. That's what I said. Don't love your life so much that if he says do something, you say, oh, God, I can do this, but I ain't doing this. 
He wants it all. He wants it all. He wants it all. Let him have his way. God bless you.